Yeah, everybody's heard about the the rise of AI chips and kind of how how the world is just uh, fully invested in this. And so Samanova, we're a spin up from Stanford University, really thinking about how do we actually do this the proper way if we actually had a clean slate? As you know, with GPUs, they've been around for a long, long time, originally from graphics and gaming, and we've built an artificial intelligence uh, chip off of an, uh, 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 an architecture that's been around for a long, long time. So we took a blank sheet of paper, started thinking about how to create a semiconductor that's power efficient, high performance, real time, and at a much, much lower cost to operate. And so now, seven years in, I found this company, and seven years in, we're able to really proudly say that we've got chips now that we can actually deliver 10 times the performance of an NVIDIA GPU at one-tenth the power. And we emphasize the second part. As you know, power is so important. So we really, really focus on delivering that performance at a fraction of the power, because that's going to be a challenge that all of us care about, both from a sustainability and from an operational cost perspective. So what is different in terms of your tech stack, your infrastructure stack, versus, say, what NVIDIA is, is building? Yeah, well, the chip architecture is data flow, and this is something that's uh, uh, um, you know, um, incredibly powerful when it comes to neural nets. Um, but if you think about kind of what, what these neural nets really want to do, the world's moving into this world of inferencing. There's training and this inference. And as the world's moving to inference, what we're starting to see is the inferencing is where millions and millions of users are starting to come in. Training is something that a, uh, a few number of large companies can afford to do. But the inferencing is where the rest of us use. And so AI is going to be about inferencing 90 plus percent of the time. And for that, in order to scale, you need a very, very power efficient solution. And so when we decided to design this, we not only focus on the performance for, high, you know, uh, for large scale deployments, scaling these to thousands and thousands of racks, but a fraction of the power. And for that, you need to really think about how the neural nets are going to operate within the silicon, how the users are going to come and operate with each other and provide a platform that not only allows you to actually single single tenant, single user be very low power, but share the infrastructure across many, many users, which you can't do today. You can't do today. And so the combination of our hardware with our software that allows many, many users, many different models share a single rack of, uh, of hardware and then drive the hardware power way, way down is something that's incredibly important as we scale AI across the planet. And, and just to be clear, when you say inferencing, you're talking about this is the application really of AI when we use some of these AI products. It's that part of the equation rather than the underlying model training side right. of Right, well, most of us have used the internet for a long time and you yep. search. The way I describe it, training is inventing the search algorithm, yep. right? Inference is doing the actual search, yep. right? And most of us today are searching every day. We, we look, you know, so that's why inferencing will be the dominant market for AI. Yep. We're entering this phase today that already more than 50% of the AI workloads are inferencing it's expected to go up to 90% within the next year or so. And so you're going to have most of the machines out there doing inferencing over the course of the next 12 to 18 months. We'll get into, you know, we've talked a bit about your hardware stack. We'll talk about the software side. But <clears throat> since we're on the topic of infrastructure, we woke up this morning in Davos to an announcement from the US about Stargate. Did everyone see this announcement? $500 billion of infrastructure AI investment in the US, uh, driven by OpenAI, SoftBank, uh, and others. Um, what, what do you make of that announcement in terms of what it says about the, the state of play when it comes to AI infrastructure and the needs for compute? Yeah, I mean, it's, it's a fantastic uh, uh, move and an incredible representation of how important AI is at a national level and a global level. And so you see uh, companies coming into the United States actually making these massive investments. And this is actually replicated across the world. Many, many governments across the world, whether that's in Japan or in the Middle East or in Southeast Asia, governments are getting involved. Private companies are collaborating with governments to actually participate. But the ability to scale, the ability to actually provide infrastructure that gives you the capacity is going to be incredibly important as you drive into the next age of, uh, of uh, an AI economy. Right? Your ability to actually have scale and ability to actually be able to find the computing infrastructure to power your business will determine how effective you are in competing at the global stage. Um, do, 
this is going to help your business as well to some extent with this increased investment in infrastructure? No, look, you know, we're, we're a core technology company and we need data centers and data centers that um, are, are getting created that can afford the space and the power and all the different things that we're talking about. Now, at Samanova, we're really proud of the fact that not only do we need to participate in this global infrastructure, how do we find better sources of energy and cooling, all of that, but ultimately we start with core technology, core technology that uses less. Mm. Right, as many of you know, a single NVIDIA rack today is 140 kilowatts. Someone over, we do 10 times faster at 10 kilowatts. 10 kilowatts of standard infra infrastructure, air cooled. And so for us, we start with the, with the premise of if I start with core technology that is not incrementally less power, but significantly less power, that's going to buy us more time. It buys us more time to figure out how to build out the data centers. It buys us more time to make the long-term uh, uh, power grid investments. It buys us more time in order to actually figure out better solutions to provide uh, more energy into the planet. But that's something we're going to have to do as a global uh, um, uh, society to think about how the energy uses are going to actually uh, evolve. But we need more time. We need more time, and you, you, um, you can get it if you take your core technology and fundamentally useless.